Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today as we continue our ICAP webinar series. My name is Chelsea Hunt, and I am the Executive Director of Work-Based Learning and Industry Engagement here at the State Department of Education. Um, our voice from the field today, is, I'm so excited about this webinar because Fallon Wilson from Chelsea Public School, she's the counselor there, and she's going to be sharing some best practices and really how her school district uh, hosted some career fairs and are continuing to host it to this day. Um, so really looking forward to that. We do ask if you have any questions, please use your chat box. This webinar will be recorded as usual, and it will be archived on okedge.com. Also, uh, I will get the webinar to you and the PowerPoint by tomorrow, so look for that. It might come a little bit later, but you will have it for before the weekend so you can have access to this. Uh, we, again, just want to welcome you. Please also, um, after this, Fallon will give her presentation, and then she will answer some questions. And then I will come back, and I will show some updates on ICAP and just some upcoming conferences for you. And then I will answer any last-minute questions that you may have. And then we will conclude the webinar um, from there. But now, please just join me in welcoming Fallon Wilson. Hello. So we have started um, hosting career fairs uh, this Next spring will be our third year to do so. And um, just going to talk a little bit about how we started um, and how it kind of took off after the first year. So the purpose that we had was that we just really wanted our students. We are in a small area, rural area. If you're not familiar with Chelsea, we are in northeast Oklahoma. We're right on Route 66, about 45 miles northeast of Tulsa. So the nearest highly populated area to us is about 20 miles to our south. Um, pretty small school. We have less than 200 students in our high school, and our community population is about 2,000. So what we wanted to do was give our students an opportunity to explore careers and have a chance to talk to people in the fields that they may be interested in. And so we just had an idea. I was actually talking to our facts teacher one day. We were talking about Career Tech Month and the things that they were going to be doing during Career Tech Month. Um, and we just kind of mentioned having a career fair as be something that we would like to have. And a few days later, she came back to me and was like, hey, you know, we were talking about this and let's, let's go for it. Let's try it. So we tossed the idea around. Um, we spoke with our principal. We asked our teachers how they felt about it and just started planning from there. The first year, our initial thought was to only invite Chelsea alumni back. Sometimes being in a small rural school, students, family members can sometimes have this thought that to do something big, to go to a big college or go do something great, you have to go to a big school. And we really wanted our students to realize that they have a great educational opportunity right here at Chelsea and that there have been many, many successful graduates from the Chelsea school system. And so the first year we invited alumni back to really show our students what um, past graduates have done with their lives. So in the planning stages for year one, we held our initial planning meeting in December, um, figured out where, when, all of the logistics of holding that career fair. Um, we knew we wanted to have it during Career Tech Month. So that is when we have three career tech programs on our campus, our FACS program, our BMITE, and our AG programs. And we wanted to really integrate our career fair in with their programs that they, um, their assemblies and their different activities that they have during career tech month. And again, why to showcase um, past graduates and the careers they hold. And we were going to reach out to our Chelsea alumni. In our small town and our community, alumni is a very big deal. Um, there are several different activities throughout the year that alumni come back um, to our school to be a part of. So we really felt that reaching out to alumni would not be an issue, and we felt that they would be willing to come and participate. So our teachers all started contacting alumni. We actually have an alumni Facebook page, and so um, one of our teachers is a member of the alumni board, and so she went out and started talking and posting on Facebook, and we had a wonderful response from that. 
I, um, I write a weekly Counselor's Corner column in our local newspaper, and so I put information in there of how people, if they would like to be invited or involved in the career fair, they could contact myself and, and we would get them signed up for it. We emailed friends, family, everyone we knew, and then we also just started handing out letters. We all know somebody, and they know somebody, so we just started asking everybody we could if they'd like to be involved. So um, there's a little bit of a picture there you can see. That was our first year. Um, our, the morning of our career fair, we had an assembly for our students, um, gathered them together just to go over what the afternoon would look like, we gave students ideas of questions they could ask because we knew that when they walked into the gym with all these people they weren't familiar with, they might get cold feet. So we, we prepped them and prompted them with some questions and we told them that there is no wrong question to ask. Some of our students were afraid to ask about money and we, we ensured them that it was okay to ask our guests about salaries, starting pay, benefits, all of those things. And we had already spoken with our guests um, and let them know that those questions would be would be asked so they were aware of that too. Um, we during that morning assembly, we reminded our students of their career cluster interest inventory outcomes. We had prior to the career fair, every student in our high school had completed a career cluster inventory. So they knew, according to their interest, what fields maybe they should go and speak to first. We encouraged our students to speak to everyone present, but we encouraged them first, go to those career fields that you showed interest in. And then during that morning assembly, our students watched career cluster videos and um, a few other videos on um, interviews and, and questions that you should ask during interviews because we really wanted them to be prepared for the afternoon of things that they could ask or say to our guests. Um, and students also had career questions with them. So we went over those questions they could ask. Um, we knew again if they got cold feet, they if they had a piece of paper in front of them that had some of those questions, um, they might be more apt to ask those. And so those questions, um, was just this right here. Everything from what does a typical day on your job look like to education, uh, how do I get into the company that you work for, what advice do you have for me, to what classes did you like when you were in high school, and what made you think that this was a good career path for you. Um, things like asking what do you like about your job and what do you dislike about your job. So we really wanted our students to get in there and ask some tough questions to our guests because this is a lifelong commitment. You know, we want them to understand what kind of career pathway that they're going down and what it actually entails for them. So year one, and there's another little picture from our career fair. We had 60 alumni return to speak with our students. We thought that was a great number. And then we actually had several non-alumni join as well. Word of, word of mouth spread and people actually reached out to us and asked if they could attend and we were welcome um, to have them. All of the attendees were organized by career clusters. We had signs above tables that would direct students to those career clusters. So again, going back to that career cluster interest inventory, students knew which clusters they aligned with, and that just made it easier within our career fair of getting them to those people to ask about fields within that career cluster. And then each attendee had a sign with their name, their graduation year and um, their specific career field so that students could see. We had um, everything from doctors and attorneys, insurance, mechanics, welders. We had a huge array of people and what we really wanted again our students to see was that all of these people graduated right here where you are today. So just because you're from a small town and a small school doesn't make mean that you can't do anything. It means that you can do anything you truly want to do with your life. And then students came through the career fair by grade level. So we, we gave the majority of the time to our juniors and our seniors. 
um, our sophomores and our freshmen, they had less time just logistics wise to get it all to work out that um, we felt that our juniors and seniors should be given the additional time since they were the the students who were going to be going into those career fields the soonest. After the career fair, we had our students complete a survey. Um, we also had our career fair representatives complete a survey, and it did give us valuable information um, that we knew we needed to adjust a few things. We found out what worked, what didn't work, but that career fair survey actually met some requirements that our high school career tech teachers need um, for some of the things that they have to do being career tech teachers. So we kind of um, got two birds with one stone with that one. And then there's an example of the survey we had our um, participants complete. Um, and so what did we learn from that survey? Well, we learned that we actually were missing some, some fields that had a lot of interest in them. And so we knew that the next year going into year two of our career fair, we needed to target specific career fields for our students. And we also realized that the arrangement we had, it left a very large gap in the center of our gym. And if you know anything about high school students, when they get nervous, they, they tend to just be magnets and cluster up. And, and uh, we knew we needed to do something to get them to have to spread out a little bit more. So our layout needed to be different. And then our students requested that they wanted more time, more time to ask questions and, and go and visit with more people. Um, we also needed to find a way to make it easier for students to locate career fields. So the first year, every table had a green tablecloth because that's our school color. Um, and they had a sign that said what their career field was, but it we realized afterwards that it wasn't as easy to see or for students to locate as we really had hoped for. Um, but overall, we, we had positive feedback from year one. Our community, our administrators, um, our representatives and our students, they all had great things to say. So year two, we had some new additions. We designed a new layout. We added color-coded tables to match our career clusters interest survey. And up in the corner of that picture, that is from the Cooter Navigator, the um, career clusters. Those are the colors that we put on the tables so that instead of looking for a sign above everybody's heads, our students just had to find their color. And most of our kids, they may not have been able to tell you what their cluster was, but they could say, hey, I'm green, I'm purple, I need to go here. So we, we found a way to get them to the places they needed to be. We actually held year two in our commons area instead of our gym. The layout forced students to not be able to um, gravitate to the center because there was not a center and it was um, not spread out as much. So students had to um, kind of meander through the career fair a little bit more, which helped. I, I feel like it really helped our students go through and visit with more people. And in year two, we invited more than just alumni. We reached out to many new people. Um, we invited businesses, not just individuals, to, to come in. We added colleges, career tech centers. Um, we actually had some staffing, um, I think it was American Staff Corp. They came and talked about um, what they have to offer. Cherokee Nation came. So we really had more than just alumni there. And then the biggest thing was that we added breakout sessions. So we moved our career fair to the mornings, and then we had breakout sessions in the afternoon. And this is something that we took from, um, I want to say it may have been Mustang, Middale, one of the very large districts um, in Oklahoma. They had presented at the Oklahoma School Counselor Conference um, I believe it was in 2018, on a senior conference. And it was such a great presentation about all of the things that the students were able to learn about, finance, college entrance, how to sign a lease to rent um, an apartment. And when I brought that back and shared it with, um, in year two we had a new principal, so I shared it with our new principal and um, all of our teachers. And we felt that it was something valuable that our students could really benefit from. And so we added that into the afternoon portion of our career fair day.
And then also, there were student incentives for asking questions. Many of the people who attended year two um, brought things that they could give away um, when students came by their booths and um, asked questions. But then we also had some outside donations that we were able to give away as well. And then we added, because it was going to be a, a very long day, we let our um, attendees know they'd have morning refreshments and lunch was provided for all attendees in the afternoon. And our career tech teacher, um, fax teacher, her and her students actually both years prepared the meal for them. So year two, um, this is a flyer, an example of a flyer. Um, our new principal actually created that for me. He's very techy. I'm not so techy, so I was very happy that he was willing to put that together. Um, we started holding our planning meetings. We contacted all of our previous attendees. Most were able to attend year two, um, a few due to timing of the year that we had moved it to and other engagements that they were um, committed to already were not able to attend. We sent out information through email, posted again on our Facebook page, published in the weekly newspaper column, we started calling potential new attendees. Um, we arranged for the breakout session and planned the logistics of how that afternoon breakout session series would um, take place. And then we also went and um, we received some donations of items for incentives for our students. And I'll talk about those incentives here in just a moment. So our year two career fair, and here are a few pictures of the people who attended. It was on February 7th last year. We woke up to snow, sleet, and ice, and I panicked, um, thought it was going to be uh, a lot of no-shows. But fortunately, there are only a very few people um, that were not able to attend due to the weather. Some of our attendees actually drove over two hours just to be here. And it was snow and sleet, and it was not a pretty day, but they had committed, and they came and showed up for our students. Um, News on 6 actually arrived after covering the morning weather, and he was the highlight of the day. Um, my Some of my juniors and seniors who had already been through the career fair before um, Joseph Holloway arrived, I went over the intercom and said, if anybody would like to speak to News on 6 Anchor, this is your chance. And we had people rushing now. I felt a little guilty because he was kind of bombarded by all the people who wanted to talk to him who were interested in journalism or communications. So the, here's a couple of new pictures of our second year. Again, it was moved to the commons area. You can see it's not so spread out, so the students really could not gather in a middle um, area. We had over 60 participants. Here are a few of those listed. We actually had people from the OKC area who came across our flyer somehow and called and asked us if they could attend. And, and it was a labor union group. Um, it was either a construction or a masonry group. And um, we were so excited to have more people present. The biggest thing was that we had more companies present than we had ever had um, the previous year where it was more just individuals. So like KAMO Power is out of Vanita, which is a very close um, town to us, about 20 minutes to the north, who has all kinds of um, career opportunities for our students and actually will help pay for education and training um, if our students go to work for them in certain circumstances. And so they came down and they had um, quite a few different um, people to represent from IT to linemen to um, accounting and all kinds of jobs that they have available. So we were really excited that so many people um, were willing to come to a small school and be a part of our career fair. So our breakout sessions in the afternoon, um, students selected four breakout sessions to attend and then we had signs by every classroom door letting the students know where they were. Students also had an agenda that listed all of the breakout sessions that told what the breakout sessions were going to cover and then in what classroom those were going to be held in. Um, each class had a limit on how many students could actually enter that session. We didn't want, um, so the way we did that, we took our student 
total number of students, divided it by our breakout sessions, and came up with a, a, a number that we felt, okay, well, if we let this many in this one, then that means we still have enough to fill this. We didn't want um, one of our breakout sessions to only have two or three students in it, so we tried to really average those out. And it also made our students, with them understanding that the sessions would fill up, it made them move quicker to get to those breakout sessions because they wanted to get in one that they wanted and not just one that was not full so that they had to go to that one. Um, all of our students had lanyards and there's a couple of pictures down here at the bottom. Um, their lan these were lanyards that on one side it told all of the career clusters if they got a, an initial by talking to somebody in all of those clusters and on the back side it had the breakout sessions they had to write the name of the breakout session and then have the presenter put their initials on it if they had those filled out and turned in at the end of the day then they were put into drawings for prizes that had been donated to us and these are the breakout sessions that we came up with um, so one of the really neat breakout sessions is the first one listed here. It's eight, I'm 18, what does that mean? And we actually had the Rogers County, um, um, we had the DA, he came and he presented to our students on what does it mean when you turn 18? And our students, um, you know, sometimes they think just because I'm 18, I'm still in high school, so it doesn't apply. And we, you know, that was a neat session for them to sit through. And you know, now that you are 18, things are different. He did a great job. He had some law enforcement, um, both local and from Rogers County, with him to answer all kinds of questions. And our students had really great questions. Um, we had a session there on how to land your dream job how to fund college, um, reality check. Um, we On reality check, we actually brought recent graduates within the last five years or so um, come back, tell about their experiences. We had someone who went straight to work, someone who went straight to college, and someone who attended tech while in high school and then went to work. Um, so we wanted to make sure we had um, representatives from all of those career pathways. We had a social media and my future session scheduled. Unfortunately, due to the weather that morning, that one did not get to happen. We did have her back later on to present to our students though. Um, we had a session where to go when you can't find a job. And that was Cherokee Nation Career Services as well as the American Staff Corp. And that was really important to our students, not just for themselves, but also just valuable information that they can take back to their families. So if they have a family member or a friend that loses a job or just needs to know, how, how do I get help when I, I really need a job and where do I go? So that was some valuable information for them. One of the very fun classes or breakout sessions was the non-traditional jobs for girls. Um, we had a firefighter from the city of Tulsa. We had a representative from GRDA. We had um, a representative from one of the career techs and then a couple of other representatives. We had a police officer, a purchasing agent for a manufacturing company. And it was a really neat session for our young ladies to attend. That was kind of a spinoff of something our local career tech actually holds each year. They hold a, um, a day called non-traditional jobs for girls. And so we just kind of went at, we reached out to them, asked them if they would help us with that. And they helped us get contacts of people who would come in and talk to our young ladies about jobs that tend to be male dominated, but that our young ladies can absolutely enter and just giving them some insights on what it's like to be in those non-traditional jobs. Um, we had a session on eye crimes and how to protect, protect your digital image. That was a great session for our students as well because they don't always understand, even though we tell them a hundred, hundred, and hundred times that they don't understand that everything that they post out there um, is not always private and that people can see it and, and just what that digital footprint um, looks like that they leave behind. We had our military present, um, so students interested in military could go in and hear from um, several different branches. We had um, job benefits. What does that even mean? Because most of our students, when we say, hey, this, you know, they're talking about career pathways or specific careers, and we'll ask them, well, does it come with benefits? And they don't understand what that means. So that was a very beneficial for our seniors um, to go through that one. Community Higher Ed did a presentation on all of their programs that they have available to students. Um, 
uh, popular among some of our juniors and seniors was playing at the collegiate level, um, what you need to know. So Drury University came out and did a great presentation for our students on, re on reality of what it takes to play at the next level, how to be eligible, how to register with the, either the NCAA or the NAIA. Um, we had um, the Talking Leaves Job Corps was um, a big hit as well because several students um, were interested in an alternative to um, high school. Maybe, you know, their high school is hard for them or they struggle with this kind of a setting. How could I go and learn a trade and get finished with high school at the same time? And so that was something. And just also knowing that Job Corps isn't something you have to do during high school, you can actually go after you graduate too. So that was something beneficial to some of our students. Um, the cost of living was valuable information so that our students could really understand what insurance costs, what electric bills, water bills, typical rent, um, groceries, all of those kind of things. Um, Gloria Conaway is our school social worker and did a fantastic job on breaking that information down to our students. Um, opportunities during high school, uh, we had a couple of presenters come and talk about um, things that the students could apply for that give them great experience, exposure, and then also just things that help them grow as individuals. So um, things like the um, youth tour with our um, Northeast Oklahoma Electric Co-op, um, Hobie, Girl State, Boy State, things uh, of, of that nature. And then we also had the Port of Catoosa present. Um, Christy Hubbler, did a fantastic job on talking to our students about all of the jobs available right there at the Port of Catoosa. So <clears throat> after the students did the morning career fair, the afternoon breakout sessions, they again completed the survey. And so we had um, invited all of our morning career fair guests and our afternoon breakout session speakers to stay for lunch. That was in our fax room. And then we actually had the survey on year two as a Google form set up already on the, um, the computers in our library. So after this, they all had lunch, they went down to the library and completed the survey. And then our students were also given a follow-up survey. And then the student, um, the surveys let us know what uh, breakout sessions the students very much enjoyed or which ones they thought, well, it was good, but it didn't really give me much information. And we are now planning for year three. Um, it is actually set for the first week of March. We are having breakout sessions again this year. Um, we're gonna change them up just a little bit. We have a couple of others that we wanna add to it. And we are also inviting two other nearby schools to attend that are the same size, pretty much the same um, community um, dynamic that we are. And before we have our career fair in March, we are going to host a game of life reality check in January. Um, and if you're not familiar with reality check or game of life, um, it's just like the game of life that we all used to play as kids. Students will go in, pick a career, spin a wheel to see how many kids they have, go and pick a, out a car and buy a house. And hopefully by the end, they still have money left over. But um, a lot of times what happens is they reality, they do have a reality check and um, it doesn't always work out the way they think and they don't have enough money at the end of the game to keep going. Um, we had planned to have that in October. It was a very busy month and we decided we didn't want to just cram it in as one more thing. We wanted to really give it time and justice. So we moved that to January and then we will hold our career fair in the, the first week of March. And there is my contact information. If you have, um, would ever like to contact me, I'd be glad to help you out any way that I can. So, um, are there any questions for Fallon? And if you have them again, just type them in the chat box.
you might need to read those. Uh, so, Fallon, one question is, do you have information to share about Game of Life? So we are still putting all the pieces together, but I would be glad to send out um, everything after January um, once I have it all completed. Okay, and next question is, did you create it yourself? So we are actually merging. Um, there was, I think it was UConn High School held a reality check a few years ago. I don't know if they still do or not. Several other schools have hosted similar things. So we've taken bits and pieces from those schools and adapted it to make it work for us. And so that's what we're still working on a few um, pieces and components of it. Okay, and for everyone, just a reminder that this PowerPoint will be made available tomorrow along with a recording, and then we also will have this in the near future on okedge.com. Fallon, another question is how many students were in each session during the career fair part? Um, so, are you, are you referring to the morning career fair? Or yes. the morning? Okay, morning. so we sent our... So we have less than 200 students in our whole high school. So about average between 45 to 60, depending on which class it was. They went through as grade levels. Okay, and the final question that we have so far is how did you get teacher buy-in? I work in a fabulous school and our teachers were just on board for it. Um, there are a few that I think maybe have been reluctant at first of what, it, you know, the work that it, it would entail, but just reassuring them that this is something that we're all going to be a part of. They, they were fantastic and just went for it. There wasn't really much that I had to do to convince them. I am very lucky to work with the teachers that I work with. Very nice. Alan, another question. How many people besides yourself and how much time has been involved to prepare for the day? Year two, for example. Okay, so for year two, um, there were at least 10 of us that had um, parts of, you know, inputs and who's going to do what. So, um, for example, our facts teacher took care of the lunch. I didn't have to worry about that. Our um, BMIC teacher, her class, they printed all of the posters and all of the um, tags that went on the lanyards for our students, so she covered all of that. Our principal took care of the flyer that was in the PowerPoint. Um, we all took um, flyers and letters to hand out, so every teacher contacted somebody. Um, time involved. A lot of it was just uh, making contact and, and calling people. It seems like a lot of work to put something like this together, but afterwards, um, I think the person with the most work was our fax teacher preparing the lunch. Um, as far as getting people here, putting out plastic tablecloths to color coat with the, um, the um, career clusters interest inventory, there's not a whole lot of work other than just reaching out and asking people to come. Prepping the students um, took a couple of different class periods to you know, get their career cluster interest inventory completed, and then just talking to them about the day and questions that they um, could ask to the people who were attending. All right, Valen, another question. Uh, did all grade levels attend the breakout sessions or just your juniors mm -hmm. and seniors? So all grade levels attended the breakout session, um, freshman, ninth grade through 12th grade. There were a couple of sessions that we limited to only juniors or seniors. So if it had an, a notation beside it that it was only juniors and seniors, um, or if I told them the one that was, I'm 18, what does that mean? It, they had to be either a junior or senior um, to go to that one. I'm trying to think which other. There was another one that, um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but we had another one that was limited to juniors and seniors. And so our teachers actually stood at the door for those breakout sessions, counted students as they went in, acted as the moderator for the breakout sessions, introduced the guest speakers, and then dismissed the students after each session. Okay, so Fallon, that looks like at this time, that's all the questions. I'm going to go ahead and continue in the webinar, but if you do have questions, please type them in the chat box, and we will answer it um, as soon as I'm finished with a few slides.
And thank you so very much to Fallon. That was excellent. Uh, just to really hear the perspective of a rural school district. And um, I love seeing that all of my school districts are able to do um, amazing things for the students without, despite the limited capacities that they may have. Um, one thing that Fallon said that really resonated with me was that we all know somebody. And if we think about it, that's really the simplicity of starting to form partnerships with business, community, and industry, is just to think of who's in your circle of influence, who do you know? So when you're having a job shadowing event or a, um, a mentorship event or a career fair like we've learned about today, or even an internship, who do you know in that circle of influence are just, um, yes, your circle of influence, that's what I'm gonna say, who do you know so that you can start forming these partnerships and inviting them? And, you know, don't get scared. Don't hesitate to invite. Ask all that you know and watch them come and show up. Um, and also, don't be afraid if they say no. It just might be a delay right now, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen later on. I also wanted to let you all know uh, that we have a survey. We really began these ICAP webinar series in January of 2019. And so all of those series are listed and we just really wanna get your feedback. Is this something that you feel is valuable? Is this something that you wanna see continued on in the 2020 school year? Uh, so please really do take that survey and um, give us your honest feedback because that's how we improve and we get information to you that you need. Our next uh, ICAP webinar series, we will end it for the year of 2019. It'll be Thursday, December 19th. And we will have our voice from the field, Beverly Woodrum. And she is the former director of Born Mentoring Initiatives. And she's gonna share with us uh, how to get started on mentorships, uh, which is a component of work-based learning as, as well as the career fair that you heard about today. Uh, so please go ahead and register for that, get it on your calendar, and we hope to see you on December 19th. I wanted to just put a plug in that if you are able to be at your house and in the comfort and have your TV on, uh, turn to OETA and check out Education Matters. Um, tonight, it's really going to be, I believe, some representatives from Norman uh, Public Schools, and they're going to be sharing some information that's vital to school districts. So uh, those episodes always occur every third Thursday at 7 p.m. So they really correlate with our ICAP webinar series. So whenever we've had an ICAP webinar, OETA Education Matters will be on that night at 7 p.m. If you're not able to catch it tonight, it'll be rebroadcasted the following Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. Um, so uh, really check that out. There's also an opportunity for you to nominate your school or share a great story or idea highlighting um, just by emailing educationmatters at sde.ok.gov because we really want to hear from you um, so that, make, uh, that we are ensuring that you're getting information that is applicable to you. And then if you ever missed an episode, they are all on sde.ok.gov excuse me, .gov, slash, backslash education matters. Um, so you can check out all of those episodes if you didn't get a chance to see them beforehand. I just wanna introduce you, hopefully you have seen this. This is our new College and Career Readiness website. It really is your hub for everything that is in relation to students and family, business and community, and educators. Uh, this is where you'll find information on those ICAP toolkits. Uh, you will find information on OSD Connect, which is a new online learning community platform. Uh, you will find information on uh, business engagement. Uh, what does a calendar of events look like? How can you start including those business and um, community partners into your school day events? And so there's a calendar that's broken up by month um, to help you out in those. So a great, again, resource, okedge.com. Also want to remind you, uh, ICAP was implemented this, the beginning of this school year. Uh, so if you have not chosen or selected for your school district, which free online tool you're going to use, whether that's OK College Start or OK Career Guide, um, I really do recommend that you get that down and set in stone. And then also look at the ICAP implementation toolkit because it has a really good suggested outline on how to start implementing ICAP in your school district. Uh, also here is the trainings for both OK College Start and OK Career Guide. And then both representatives came out and spoke to both of these online tools. So if you want to know a little bit more about them, please check out those webinars and you can just sit 
and kind of get caught up on that as well. I uh, just wanted to introduce you to some things that are new on the SDE website and OK Edge. On the SDE website, if you haven't heard, the class of 2023 college preparatory slash work ready curriculum graduation checklist, it is out and available to you. So once you get this link, it'll take you right to that document. Um, also, I believe the 2023 college core curriculum will be out this, this week. So uh, that link will again take you to, I'm sorry, the se.ok.gov. That'll take you to the main uh, house on the counseling website, but that 2023 college prep will take you to the main document. But go to that website because that'll help you out if you haven't seen those new graduation checklists. Um, some information if you're thinking about creating an internship program at your school district. Uh, we need, have the new revised internship FAQ, so that's some good guidance for you. And then uh, on OK Edge, there's that business and community partnership guides. There's a plethora of um, one pagers or multiple pager documents that really break down some terms on how to connect not only terms but activity suggestions on how to start connecting with business and community in your local area. So please check that out. Coming soon, we will have a business and education partnership toolkit. I know I have said soon, but we truly are in the last phase of vetting this. Um, and so it's excited and we are happy to get it into your hands, but that will be on OK Edge as well. Another thing that will be coming soon as well is um, we've heard a lot about what are activities or suggested activities for work-based learning and or service learning. Um, so we are currently working on some guidance documents. It'll be just a really a one pager. That's the goal. Um, and so that will be coming soon as well. And that will be on OK Edge. So we are working, we're hearing you. And if there's anything that you need, please let us know because that's um, how we're able to make sure we're meeting your needs. As some things I want upcoming conferences, just mark your calendar. Um, in 2020, February 17th, it's going to be the Bridges to Hope Teaching in the Shadow of Trauma. So it'll be our Trauma Summit. Uh, please, uh, Dr. Bruce Berry um, with the Trauma Academy, he will be there. Um, last I heard, we had 8,600 already registered, which is amazing. It will be at the Cox Center. There's still time to register. So again, February 17, 2020, and that registration link will take you there, and it is free of charge for you to attend. Another thing I want you to start marking your calendars for is um, in 2020, it's going to be March 2nd through the 6th. We are going to have Oklahoma Career Exposure Week. Uh, last year, we did participate in this event um, and with using our new online learning community platform. However, that was only used for our ICAP pilot school districts. Now it's going to be open for all school districts to utilize it. Uh, we are partnering with the Office of Workforce Development who actually puts on this event. And we are also partnering with the K-20 Center. And so we, will, we are working currently on um, vetting some business industry leaders so that you'll have um, access to that and then a, a schedule uh, so that you can start signing your school districts up. And on these platforms, 100 uh, classrooms, it's available for up to 100 classrooms. So it's plenty of space for a lot of school districts to come and join us. Uh, it will be virtually, so that way uh, you just sign up and you'll, it'll be a webinar similar to today, but it'll be an industry leader talking to your students. Um, one thing that we do recommend is if you have a webcam to have that available. If not, make sure you have any questions um, in the chat box, so just like you did today. We will also have some pre-prepared questions for you so that you can give to your students in advance and have them really think about what kind of questions they want to ask these industry leaders, why they have a chance to have that one-on-one -on -one with them. Um, our goal is really not to have any longer than 30 minutes. Uh, so again, the schedule is going to be coming your way. We will have that sent out in our various newsletters. Um, so if you haven't signed up, I have a link coming up real soon to get to you in your hands. And then also, if you are on the student support newsletter, um, that will be in that information as well. So here it is. If you need access to the college and career readiness, uh, webinar, excuse me, newsletter. Also, I was informed that if you go to sde.ok.gov, um, you're able to click on a newsletter and then really sign up for all newsletters that our agency offers. So if you just want to get plugged in, that's a great way for you. Um, always say stay connected with us on Twitter and Facebook so that you can see what's going around with our school districts and at the state level.
And then um, last but not least, want to just remind you, uh, we are here to help you um, in any capacity that you need. So we have a new link, so you're able to send us and shoot us an email, just, and we'll get back with you. Um, and that's just for a general location so that we're not all checking our individual emails but have one spot to make sure that we're answering your questions. Um, I also will look at the, I, we have some more questions, so I will go with that. But I do want to thank you for joining us today, and I hope you have found this valuable. Um, Fallon, I have a couple of questions coming your way. So the first one is, oh, someone said thank you, Fallon, for all the information. Uh, the first question is, would an event such as this career fair, uh, Chelsea did count towards, well, this is probably more towards me, sorry, Fallon, uh, count towards the service-based or work-based component of ICAP? Yes, it would. So the guidance document that we're working on will really break down uh, what activities would count as service learning and what activities would count as um, work-based learning. So the main components just off the top of my head of uh, work-based learning, and really also this guidance document will break down the definition so that you have better clarity on that as well. Um, but some components of work-based learning include apprenticeships, internships, mentorships, so that's the AIM uh, Act. It also includes job shadowing, it includes career fairs, it includes project-based learning, uh, virtual learning. Um, I think I said mentorships, but if I didn't, internships, I did say those. Uh, so there's a plethora of things, but again, that guidance document will break it down very nicely. It'll be a suggestion of some activities. We don't want to limit you and your creativity, uh, but we do want to give you some guidance on what it is. But again, uh, don't want to limit you because we know that you can do great things, and we don't want to put a box into the creativity of what your students need because you know your students best. Um, but yes, in answer to that question, it will. Are there any additional questions for Fallon or myself? Okay, well again, I wanna thank you so very much and remind you that this recording and PowerPoint will be sent to you tomorrow. Fallon, thank you so much for presenting and just coming and joining us all today and sharing your knowledge. Um, we hope that you all have a wonderful afternoon and we will hopefully see you December 19th, 2019. Have a great day.